There are two couples at the Oscars last night. Give it a good example of a supportive male partner and a Ken. This to me is couples goal. This to me is not. I do not know any of these people and we only know what they tell us. I also don't stand for anyone. I just use celebrities to give as an example of what's happening in general in society, especially between heterosexual couples, especially in regards to women who are married to men who really appreciate their talent and support them and are great collaborator collaborators versus men who are on the insecure side and who write uh, women terribly. Who could not pay me to marry this man? A man <laughs> who allegedly uh, left his pregnant wife to be with Greta. I don't know. There's speculation around that. I've talked about it before. Um, but the reason why I didn't really like, uh, like I didn't dislike Barbie, but um, I believe he's why I don't like Barbie. I mean, besides, you know, other issues I have with it. This man is all over that script. And given the way he has treated <laughs> his ex-wife and the way he wrote a marriage story, uh, hello, that was very insightful into this man's mindset. No thank you. Versus this couple who just won an Oscar for Anatomy of a Fall. And when talking about the writing process and, and, and the collaboration, this sounded much healthier to me. And this sounded like a man who is capable of writing female characters in a way that is not overly sympathetic to Ken's and the plight of Ken's and centering Ken and giving Ken's a whole, two whole songs. Uh, like whatever, I hate Ken so much. I literally, I don't think I've ever hated a character as much as Ken. Ken is a ken cell. But I've talked about that before. So I am, I actually could, and I probably will compare. So people were like, I, and I understand why. To me, Barbie is like 101 level feminism. White feminism, by the way. But 101 level feminism that my 10 year old niece may, was like, yeah! But 46 year old Melanie, who's been through domestic violence and rape and stalking and all kinds of stuff and have seen so many women's lives ruined by marriage and not ruined by motherhood, but completely derailed by motherhood because of the men that they are parenting with, uh, this movie is like a, is, this is like a thousand times more feminist. And yet so many people were so upset that Barbie, the feminist, no, well, like this is such a more feminist movie to me. If you haven't seen it, I'm warning you now, there are going to be some spoilers, but this movie is so freaking feminist. I can't, I can't think of many stories that I'm like, yes. Whereas, um, whatever, I don't even want to give Barbie any more time. I don't hate Barbie. Every time I talk about Barbie and with any criticism, people get so upset the same way they, and it's a particular demographic of women who get upset when I criticize Taylor Swift or Barbie. I saw it with my husband. We had a really good time, enjoyed it, laughed. I could look at Ryan Gosling all day, right? Very entertaining. But it's not, it's not that feminist. Whereas this is a masterpiece story, in my opinion. And I haven't even seen the other, uh, most of the other ones. I also want to see Greta Lee's performance. I haven't seen that one yet. Um, I used to be her nanny uh, for her and her husband. And I, they are such, I loved working for them. Great people. I'm not name dropping here. I'm just saying that a lot of the successful women I know either have a partner that wants them to be successful, but actually kind of undercuts them all the time, which is what this story is about. And then there's other successful women who are married to men who are not insecure and who truly want to see these women thrive and are not threatened by that at all, nor are they wanting to ride their coattail. So I want to go into the, the compare. And again, I think I may compare some of the, the movies. The, 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 the movies are actually very similar in terms of, uh, themes a, a little bit. but I really want to compare these two interviews uh, to show you what I believe is a healthy collaboration with a male partner versus uh one that honestly I really I think I would have liked Barbie if Noah had nothing to do with that movie seriously and I did a video on this I believe Noah co-writing it it w is what ruined uh any feminism that could have been in there there was feminism in there plenty of it but um, everything I hate about that movie, I'm pretty sure it's because of <laughs> no. Or Greta's uh, 
internalized misogyny or like not having unpacked patriarchy and its effect on us enough. Clearly doesn't even understand what a matriarchy is because that ain't it. Anyway, also just want to look at him. <laughs> Little sidekick is, um, he's tired from a weekend um, in the Alps babysitting our niece and nephew. After reading this interview with uh, Justine, I just see, uh, I just, uh, um, there's a very big cultural divide between the United States and France. And I think her interview and also her relationship with her husband is very uh, telling of some of that. Anyway, let's get into it. So um, I like Greta. I do not dislike Greta. But Greta seems to be uh, still um, outgrowing her cool girl stuff. And you have to be a cool girl in these industries. I've talked about this before uh, in terms of the rust thing and Hannah being trying to be a cool girl um, and then now she's literally going to prison. You cannot be one of the boys. And yet you ha in an industry dominated by men who don't take you seriously, you end up on some level having to be one of the boys. And then you have to slowly realize that you're, you're dying on the inside by trying to be one of the boys. And then you have to kind of come full circle. So Melanie working in male dominated industries in her 40s looks very different from Melanie working in male dominated industries in her early 20s and even late 20s. Uh, because the price that you pay is never worth it. Selling your soul to fit in with men. <laughs> Greta and Noah, again, this I'm not gonna go that much into their relationship. I'm just gonna sh just kind of recap it because I really wanna go into Justine's interviews, uh, especially with this one for The New Yorker, about her movie and in her collaboration and her life and how that fed into this story. But you know, just like any woman in film, she's been, you know, asked stuff like, ooh, you think you would have made it without your attachment to Noah and blah, stuff like that. And if you're a woman in the film industry, and especially the more marginalized you are, the more intersections you're, the, the more of this nonsense you're going to get constantly. And I understand why people were upset that she got shut out of uh, as best director. But the performances that Justine got out of her character, that's a, a director's job. Like that, that's their main job is to direct their actors and get the best performances. And uh, Justine definitely did that. And also, there were plenty of women who were not nominated that deserved a nomination. But, you know, of course, all this. Eh, like, people were so freaked out. And I forget who it was, but the LA Times, that woman, oh, I'm not even going to look it up. But the LA Times being like, how dead, you know, like, criticize Justine for getting nominated because what, you know, threw her husband out a window, blah, and like, just went on a white woman rampage. How unfair it was. How dare you? How dare you, like, production of Barbie and, and having a woman at the lead of that movie. That's amazing. Any production's amazing. She had a lot of pressure on her. D director for Lady Bird, absolute. Little Women, absolute. Barbie, great job, but I don't, like, a lot of people who don't even really know what directing is. They're just mad that this person who is a, in, who did this movie didn't get nominated. But, like, I don't know very specific roles in the film industry reason the writer of the script does that the editor is a as much of a part of the storytelling as the actors the writer the director and everyone else like these are very specific roles so you can be yay greta without being violently mad that she didn't get nominated there's a lot of women who didn't get nominated that deserved a nomination we know that women have been shut out of the directing category for forever so just like justine and her husband barbie was written during this the early like during like lockdown now just for context a lockdown in LA or wherever the hell they live is very different than a lockdown in France yes you're supposed to stay at home yes things are closed that 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 but in France you literally couldn't leave your house you could not leave your house if you had one hour you could go do exercise uh you could go one kilometer and you had to have a permission slip and you had to sign and date it. I got pulled over all the time by the police being like, Meh. I got in trouble for being more than one kilometer, which I was not, by the way. I had my phone tracking it. We literally had to be with whoever we lived with 23 hours a day. Unless you went to the pharmacy or the supermarket, in which case you had to have a permission slip. Yes, every mom in theory was at home. When you can't even go for a long walk and you literally have to be in your home for 23 hours a day, that is, that marriage experience is gonna be very different in France than in LA. There's a reason why the divorce rate is going 
out, out the roof right now is because a lot of women, because of confinement and lockdown and literal lockdowns, which was way worse in Spain. Holy crap. Ask them what that was like. Woo, they literally, children were not allowed outside for months. But that was kind of um, a accelerator, right? If you had problems in your marriage, boy, are you going to not be able to avoid them now? Or if you are dating, a lot of, a lot of, uh, marriages happen because of these lockdowns, mine included. Try going from seeing someone once or twice a week to 23 hours a day every day for like three months. That's like five years of dating thrown into one, <laughs> like three months. Minus your social life and everything. It is like, uh, there's a microscope on your relationship when you go through something like that or any, uh, big moment, uh, any trauma, a death, anything like that. So she's been asked a lot about her relationship with Noah and, and how it was working on this. And I actually did a whole video on this before. Again, I do not know these people. They may be so, so freaking happy with each other and love this arrangement, but this is not for me. This is definitely not for me. I could not handle being married to a man who left his pregnant wife for me, but also who is a naysayer. Feedback is really important. Um, constructive criticism, I live for that. That's how I became a really good writer is being willing to listen to feedback that's really hard to hear, right? It's, it's humbling. But um, like this dude just sounds like a prick, honestly. So when Margot Robbie approached her about writing this, she was like, yes. And she basically said, uh, Noah has to do it too. She says, I don't know. I think I had a six month old baby when I said yes. And I wasn't necessarily running everything by him. And it was March of 2020 that Noah said, are we meant to be writing a Barbie movie? I said, yes. He said, I don't have any ideas for that. Why did you sign us up for writing something different? And she had to like convince him to trust her gut, basically. And, and to his credit, he did. But given their age gap, given that he had a more, um, he was, you know, more successful in his, his career as a director, which is so hard to break in as, as a woman in general. I, I would not be surprised if he talks down to her a little bit. This the way that older men love to do. And then when she talks about directing it, she said she didn't know she was going to direct. And then at a certain point, she realized she really wanted to. The reason, the moment she knew she would is when her husband was like, are you sure you want to direct this? And she was like, oh, are you interested in directing it? No, no, it's mine. Like, I don't know if he was trying to direct it himself. I don't know what that's about, but like... I'm not a fan of that. Something she was so passionate about <laughs> and so excited about and like wrote when the, with nothing, turned it into something. And he's like, are you sure you want to direct this? He probably wanted to direct it himself. He's trying to talk her out of it so he could do it. Like I, do, I never want to compete with my husband. And when you compete with men, they always uh, are going to want to win. I, do, I, I, I mean, that's honestly, I think I've told this story before. Uh, when I, when we were in confinement and we were, um, went outside and had to play Frisbee right in front of our place, uh, I realized that the way he handles losing in Frisbee and the way he, he liked when I would do good, I was like, oh, wow, this is different. A man who is like, you know, not like obsessed with his shame and his, uh, cause I'm better at Frisbee than him. I mean, I am. And every time I did a, like a really great catch or throw, he was like, yeah great one babe and then you know when he did a good one I'm like yeah like back but a lot of times he would miss or not throw it as well and he was never like centering his own disappointment or like making me feel bad for being good at it so many men always want you to feel bad when you're better at something than them I'm done with that but a lot of times they will make you second guess yourself so that they can win like are you sure you want to direct this but look at this he even thought this was a terrible idea. Try to get them out of it behind her back. Honestly, I can't believe that they admitted this stuff out loud. Like, <laughs> thank you, but like, I don't want this. He said, uh, I thought it was a terrible idea and Greta signed me up for it. Now, uh, apparently when she said yes to writing this, she said yes, but only if Noah writes it with her. See, now that is where you went wrong. I understand wanting to collaborate with your husband and your partner because Justine's going to go into that and how she really enjoyed that and why she wanted to do it with her husband. But writing a, what's supposed to be a super feminist movie and refusing to do it without a man co-writing it and then, and then what we get is a story centered on Ken who is like the big one of the biggest villains I've ever seen. <laughs> like he's literally like 
he's a cancel, right? He is the modern day version of like the biggest threat to women are Kens. <laughs> Weaponizing their stupid tears all the time to center themselves and everything. And we have to make them, it's okay, oh, it's okay. God, I hate that man so much. Thanks, Jordan Peterson. This is, this is what he's created, him and his little people. So he was like, I just don't see how this is going to be good at all. I kind of blocked it for a while. And every time she'd bring it up, I'd be like, you've got to get us out of this. And then the pandemic happened. Okay, cool. So if you hadn't been forced to stay home and deal with her <laughs> and like she didn't show you something to prove that she can write a good movie, like you would have never done this. Like what? I can't believe he actually admitted this stuff out loud. I can't. Because he made Marriage Story. Any man who made Marriage Story and didn't and thought that uh, that was a fair display of divorce, like, bro, bro, remind me to break down that movie because my God. So she talked about all the reasons why he didn't want to do it. There's no character. There's no story. So why do you want to do that? There's no entry point. And then he do like side calls to try to get us out of it. Actively trying to sabotage this thing that literally boosted her into next level. Like she's finally made it. Like she already had Little Women, Little Women and uh, Lady Bird. But having the most a billion, what, $1.4 billion movie that had so much fun. Like literally. He was like, he tried to sabotage it. Like Noah, you are not that smart and amazing and blah i'm telling you do not marry insecure men who want to compete with you because they will sabotage you luckily she's strong enough to be like no and make you know did it anyway but a, a woman with a little bit less self-respect would have probably just let this man trick her or talk her out of it also thought that the movie is about embracing your mortality and the mess of it all did you watch the same movie I watched? Because I watched a movie where men are literally the most needy little pricks ever. Even in the utopia are exhausting and selfish. Like the, the utopia Barbie land sucks. But compared to like the real world, it's like better, I guess. But no thank you to either of them. Like the whole, like what? More embracing, what, bro? Greta, did you know that this is what he thought this movie was about? <laughs> no wonder it's all about Ken. <laughs> like, and then shocker, she was right. They ended up realizing that, you know, he said, I think this is the best thing we've ever written. And he finally, once again, probably not the first time, he realized, oh, that he should just follow what Greta said. Even in my belly aching and revolting. And he's, he admitted, you know, well, if she really believes in it, then there's probably something there. Like... I'm glad that he came around and I'm glad that he's like telling us that, what a jerk he was. But I'm sorry, like, you, I would never want to be partnered with somebody who treated my craft, my career, something so important to me like this. Belly aching and revolting at it. Now he's riding her coattails, man. She probably makes more money than him now. Probably a lot more. So look at you, bro. Swear to men, all men are get gold diggers until proven otherwise. And even when they talk about how they write together and uh, they go and write alone and then they come together and give each other feedback. She's like, we listen to hear if the other person's laugh. But, but Noah was like, no, it's more like in lurking anticipation of the wreck. I don't know. Like everything this man says makes me feel like he's just competing with her and needs constant validation. And you know, what better person to get it from than a younger woman who looks up to you? You know, who's not, who is not as big in the industry and is on her way up. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this man ends up getting tired of her. If like, if, if she ends up just blowing out of this to another galaxy and he's like, like his career goes down. I, pr I would not be surprised if this man uh, leaves her. We already know he's not, that he has no problem with that. Even that monologue, the famous monologue, her recollection is that it was a very intentional thing. And he was just like, I don't know, it's more like copied and pasted and just thrown in there. Like, M M Greta, stop bringing him to, <laughs> stop bringing him to your little press tours about this movie. He's literally like making you look foolish and himself and shocker Noah was surprised that men had a problem with this movie because men like Noah who are so progressive just they think everything's equal now like he's legitimately shocked that men hated this movie even though men are the main focus of this movie he's like what bro the fact that you were surprised by this tells me everything I need to know about you and how much work you've done
So this is not the kind of husband I would ever want to collaborate with. Whereas Justine's husband doesn't seem like a Ken. Again, I don't know these people. This guy could be a total prick in real life. I am literally just referencing what they have told about themselves. And also their work reflects things, right? And this body of work that these two people created, uh, again, this is a very feminist story. So let's get into it. Uh, this is, was in the New Yorker. So if you haven't seen the movie, or even if you have, just to recap, this woman is ge- is being accused of unaliving her husband. But as the as the writer says, but she's also uh, being accused of neglecting him for her work, flirting with other women, having ambition, being a foreigner. And I've talked about this. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break down that fight scene in a whole separate video. Uh, assuming y'all want that, let me know. Being a mother, being a, ri- a writer, and being an unreadable, underrepentant woman. I love that. Just That's exactly what this film is about. She's asked about um, how she even views her own movie. And I really love this question because uh, if y'all haven't noticed, a lot of times when I t- tell some of my own stories or I talk about uh, bigger stories, like from more like the journalist perspective, I actually understand my own work more from people's responses to my work. And I love that because I, I like the insight and the different uh context that other people are 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 watching or you know reading or experiencing my story it helps me inform my own experience i love that i love that part of being an artist i don't like it when people are like shut up you stupid bird what you mean doesn't matter you're gonna die alone with cats clearly i'm not but in general i love understanding my own story different by sharing it that's uh, hopefully that's why people want to be artists is you create this work but without the experience of people receiving that work and interpreting that work um it doesn't mean as much or sometimes anything like art is like fun to make but it's also fun to share or not even fun sometimes it's (laughs) traumatizing to share but it is an experience and a really meaningful one so she talks about how it's so funny. Can you tell that my dog is like camera shy? He keeps trying to get out of the frame. Okay, I won't make you be in this. So she says it takes about three or four years after making a film to really understand it. That since speaking out about it on like all these press tours, she's starting to make different connections about her own work and that people sharing their own in- interpretations of it has changed her vision of her own work. For instance, and this happened when that Harper's Bazaar piece came out uh, about men have no friends and women bear the burden. I had no idea what I'd just done until I released that little baby out in the world. And holy cow, the women, I had so many women tweeted at me and emailed me and wrote to me being like, I finally understand why I left my husband. Your article just explained that to me. And I was like, oh my God, like I did not realize how bad this was until I heard from other people and how they connected with certain things. So she's talking about how, uh, you know, people will watch this movie and then they sent that to their ex-boyfriends being like, if you want to know why we broke up, this is why I watched this. Because what this woman experiences in this movie is having to deal with a male ego. A, a man who is so afraid to take any risks that he hides behind her and then blames her for not being successful because he's jealous and insecure and a coward. But uh, instead of dealing with any of that, he becomes a victim. And she will not let him be a victim. She refuses to apologize for him victimizing himself. And I just, I love that so much. And she actually thought that that fight scene is when people would not be on the side of the woman. And actually that very fight scene, because it was so relatable, is exactly why women are like, oh my God, it all makes sense now. Hearing this man blame her for all these things and her being like, no, I will not apologize. And like in the way he just kept spinning it around like you, 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 you. She's like, no. You chose to move to the middle of nowhere and renovate a house so that you could avoid writing like, fork you. Like it says here, he accuses Sandra, that's the main, the the wife in the movie, of not making space for him and his work. But Sandra refuses to apologize or to agree to that interpretation of their relationship. And the interviewer is like, that seemed to me very unusual. That a woman in the couple would not try to accommodate the feelings of the man, as we are all expected to do. She tells him that he's responsible for the way he uses his time. And it's up to him to make changes, not her. So this is like one of my favorite parts of any interview I've ever read from her. She says, the the, re- the question of how we live with one another is also in the question 
about love because in love, nothing is more important than candor, than honesty. And seriously, if you are with a partner that you cannot be honest with because you have to tiptoe around their ego all the time, that is actually makes it very hard for real love to exist. That might be limerence, that might be codependency, that might be a bunch of other things, enabling, I don't know. But you can't love, lo- real true love between partners or, or, and friends doesn't really exist if you can't be honest with each other. Now, obviously the timing of those conversations or if you're being controlling with, you know what I mean? Like there's so much nuance to this. But I know like so many women wouldn't dare wouldn't dare give really honest, brutally honest feedback to their husband who is not doing what she knows he can do. And honestly, I've talked about this. There was lots of things that Anthony said about me that made me realize, holy crap, this man sees me. He appreciates me. Like he loves me as a human being, not just like something replaceable who does a lot of roles that serves him. There's something about me that he truly loves and there's something about him that I truly love because I don't, I've never just like needed a man. I didn't even date for most of my adult years if you're new here. Totally celibate for 12 of them. Like, Like needing a man has never been something, right? Being a cool girl, wanting male validation, all that, of course that comes with patriarchy. But I have never ever believed that I needed a man to live my life, right? So I wasn't just like replacing one man after another man after another man to try to heal some daddy issues or to fit in or all the things that drive us to relationship uh, in order to try to heal something or avoid ourselves. So a lot of women are in relationships to avoid ourselves. But you're, when you're with an honest man, you can't avoid yourself. They're going to confront you the same way uh, women are confronting men in, when, those, when those relationships are on it. And besides all, I've told you some of the stuff that, that Anthony said about me constantly, still said. But when I asked him, I was like, other than the things about me, what about us made you know that this is absolutely what you wanted in terms of a, 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 like a, a marriage? And one of the things he said was that he knew that I would be honest with him and, you know, push him to help him see anything that he was not willing to see the way he pushes me, right? That I would bring out the best in him the way he brings out the best in me. That I would challenge him because we had this level of candor and honesty that I see how amazing he is. He sees how amazing I am. And sometimes we don't see it in ourselves. Sometimes we also don't see when we are not doing something that that aligns with our um, values, um, our ambition, our, like all the things, right? And a partner is supposed to help you become the person that you want to be. The problem is a lot of men don't want that. They want a partner that's going to make their career and their social capital and all these things easier and better, but they don't actually want to help her become the best version of herself. And they don't even want to be the best versions of themselves. They just want to win. They just want to be rich and da 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 da. They don't actually want to be authentic. So I love this answer is that love is, you know, at the end of the day, it's rooted in honesty. And this character in this movie is uh, honest to a fault. She almost goes to, you know, jail because she's too honest. Like, not honest to a fault. Like, I admire her honesty. But that's what this movie is about. It's like, it actually ended up being something that most people, especially men, can't handle. So she says, I live with my partner who makes film. I know that each of us has an ego. But I have to tell him the truth when I think something isn't right. And he does too. If, if he started to lie to me, I'd hate it. I don't want someone co-signing the lies I tell myself that aren't actually in my best interest, that let me settle for crap that I'm not meant for, right? And that's what a a partner should want from you too. And I think that Sandra has so much respect for Samuel, the husband in the movie, that she can't lie to him. And there's these two things. So I think she's someone who has deep integrity in two respects. There's the fact that she tells the truth and the fact that she will not renounce her ambition. Oh God, I have never related to a line so much. I told y'all that abusive relationship I was in, I didn't write for a year. I didn't create anything, anything worth, worthy, like anything at all for a year. That man exhausted me. So as a, as a creative who cares a lot about women and how healing and empowering and amazing creativity is when we're afforded the time to actually explore it that is one of the reasons why I do this work because I have and I am a writing coach too 
and so, start some woman starting to date a man or something is what always throws off her creativity because men are exhausting. The other important part that I love about this movie is that her husband plays the victim, which we know by now that's like whoever is the person with the most power who doesn't want to give up that power, it usually plays the victim, right? Like the same way that white people, we play the victim all the time, especially white women. If you're new here, I talk about this a lot. So if you don't understand, just watch some of my other videos and I'll continue to talk about it. But you know, we're challenged about us having power and wanting to assert that power, which is really about dominating people, right? Like, ah, 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 ah. That's exactly what men do. This is why I can see it so easily. Because when I started to really unpack all of this stuff, I was like, oh, I know this trick. I know this trick. This is what my people do. And so when I see men doing it, I'm like, mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm -mm. she says, because he may be someone who sacrificed himself, but he's also hidden himself in a way behind the position of the man who's been mistreated. And yet these people are, as she says, they're still trying to speak to one another. For me, there's still love there. But the problem is, is that each of the, each, in each couple, there's always a burden to carry. And for them in this one, it's their son's accident, which apparently threw off the balance between them. And that dis disequilibrium uh, benefits Sandra, even if, and this is the irony of the film, Samuel's death finally allows him to take up the space that she wouldn't have given him before. Ah, like the layers to all this, y'all. I think the fundamental question of the film is the question of reciprocity in the couple. I think that also culturally, this is key. Women have always been at home and men have gone out into the world and have had the time to think, to reflect, to have ideas. Women didn't have the time. This is again why please don't date anyone unless they are literally making your life better and bringing out the best in you because all they will do is rob you of your time. And time is currency. Time is value. The reason why so many women are getting screwed is because we are consumed with time consuming things to serve the family, to serve him, to serve the children because men won't do it. So they rob us constantly of our time. And yet they've always had all this time and some men are so malicious. They will purposely burden a woman with more stuff. Those times they're like, oh, I want it cleaned this way. And she has to do all this stuff. That is not because he's like a neat freak. That is because he wants to dominate your time. I, I can't, I, I, I'm going to talk more about this when I do that scene, the fight scene, because this is such a bit, women have, have not been afforded time unless they're really rich. Women have never had as much time as men, unless you're super rich. So if you're a woman, and especially the more marginalized you are, right? If you are poor, if you're black, indigenous, and other women of color, if you're disabled, if you are in the LGBTQ plus community, like if you're any of those things, you are like your time trying to live and not die. Not die, right? Like we're not even talking about domestic labor here. That's a whole nother thing. But just surviving and not dying is very time consuming all the time. When I, God, I remember when, when I moved to France, I had a couple of friends, I had a friend group. And I remember on a Saturday, me and the woman in the friend group went and, and protested for abortion rights. And all the men on a Saturday did what they wanted. They played video games. They did all kinds of stuff. They just have endless time and maybe not always endless time. I mean, in France, they have more time because they built that in. Weekends, five weeks of paid vacation, blah, blah, blah. It's a right to have time off here. I, but I just was like, you know what? I was like, you guys should come to the thing. And they're like, maybe none of them came. The time that women have to just literally like protest and take care of other women who are being exhausted by men and take care of family members because men won't take care. Like literally, I think the way that men exploit women the most is our time, which is why I just, that my hobbies videos, this is why I'm like, go so hard on men for their hobbies because they make, time consuming and expensive time consuming hobbies that takes them away and they just get as much time that time is priceless and men who just have endless time or they rob the women in their life of time who would give anything for time to themselves to relax to write to create to paint to spend time with friends instead of having to bring the kids along time time Time. Time is not money because I don't like that capitalist view, but time is value. And men know that, but women, we didn't, we're just like waking up to how men abuse us 
through time. Women didn't have that time because they had to take care of domestic tasks. And so the fact female character who's a creator, who writes books, who is in the position at last getting time to write means that it's the man who suffers. That's why the argument begins with the question of time. And I think that's something universal and fundamental vis-a-vis -vis the place of men and women in the family. Okay, I'm just going to like read and summarize the rest because it keeps crashing. It won't let me do a green screen. Screen screen is driving me nuts. So basically, they were also in the middle of like, they started writing this like basically right, it's right uh, at, at lockdown. And they had a, an eight or ninth, nine month old. And she talks about how her husband actually is more of like, is more the default parent if there is one in their relationship. And that she always knew that if she was gonna have uh, children, that she did not, like she, she talks about how her grandmother was like a feminist, maybe even without even realizing it. Her grandmother like refused to be tied down by children and stuff the way her mom ended up being tied down by I think three kids. And so she saw a blueprint for like one thing and then saw a blueprint for another thing and was like, yeah, I don't like that one. I want that one. So even in lockdown with a nine month old, they were um, sharing the responsibility of parenting in a much different way than a lot of couples, especially couples with children. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like the pandemic literally caused a lot of these, uh, you know, the lockdowns in the early stages of the pandemic. That is what's behind so many of these divorces because women are like, Jesus Christ. Like I thought that you were actually so busy at work. You're literally just like, you don't actually do all that much for your job. And what I'm doing is so valuable. And I'm also doing paid work in addition to all the, the very time consuming work. Again, back to time. You know, a lot of men will be like, I'll mow the lawn and take out the trash. What is that? Once a week you mow the lawn? Takes an hour, two hours maybe? I used to mow lawns, I know a lot about it. I used to literally do that for a living for a while. Take out the trash, five minutes. Where a woman doing the laundry, doing the cooking, the food planning, the shopping, the, 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 those things are so time consuming. Which is why that book, Fair Play, uh, is a very imperfect book, but it, it at least is somewhere to start for couples who women are like, wow, I feel so exploited. It's because of the time. Money, and that's why I talk about money a lot, but it's the time, the time that women are, are, are being bullied into or tricked into or guilted into or their own internalized patriarchy tells us we just have to do this stuff, right? It's, it, it's time consuming. And so this whole movie is is really examining time. And I love that because men have had the luxury, not all men, obviously, like especially the poorer you are, the less time you have. But they, when they're done with their job, they deserve the time, but we don't. We don't. And that's why I think a lot of women are so much better with our time and are always so productive and just never stop. We could learn a lot from men, feeling entitled to time, taking breaks, not feeling bad about taking time. We really could learn from them. But because life has been so much easier for them, they don't value time the way we value time. And by that, I mean spare time. In that movie, her husband could have written at any point. He could make the time, but he chose to do very time consuming things like renovating a house, homeschooling their child, because those are very time consuming things. And then he could say, well, I just don't have time to write and I hate you because of it. And she refused to let him hide behind that lie. And another thing she talks about, I'm going to read it now. I love life as a couple, but it's true. It can be quite dull. So I think it's cool to be able to share creative moments with Arthur. So she's casted him in some of her films, but she was like, what was interesting was to get him into my territory, be able to share this. Oh, I love this. She says, when talking about the two blueprints between her grandmother and her mom, I saw these two blueprints, which made it very clear to me that I, what I wanted and what I didn't want when I had a baby. I absolutely did not want to be doing childcare solo. I didn't ask. I imposed that schema. And here's the other thing. Arthur wrote just as much of the female characters as the male character. He didn't divvy up the writing in a gendered way. Maybe the most complex scene for us was the fight scene because I wanted to keep it for myself. But they rewrote it apparently 60 times because the, the fight scene is, is so important to this movie and she wanted to get it right, which is another lesson y'all. Creativity is about, is about re it, writing is about rewrites. The first draft is like vomiting all over a page. It's like so embarrassing when I write the first time. So a lot of times women get held back by our, and men, I think that's what his problem was. Perfectionism, creativity is messy and it's about rewrites and redoing and sculpting new things. And her husband was afraid to do that. So he busied himself and his time 
and hated her for it. So I'm gonna go into the movie itself later, but writing a script like that, I don't see how that could have done, been done with a man like Noah. I don't know, what do you think?